Hi, welcome to Actual LOL. These are the board games that I've been playing lately. Starting with Cryptid. This is a deduction game from Osprey Games. And in this game, you're trying to find the Cryptid, which is like a monster that is hidden somewhere in the, you've got a, six of these map tiles with a bunch of hexes on that represent uh, different things like forests and swamps and deserts. And you are each given a clue at the start of the game that is basically one quarter, if you're playing four players, one quarter of the solution to finding where the cryptid is. And then it's a very simple, on your turn, you will ask questions of other players by, by placing a pawn on a spot. And you're effectively saying, like, is the cryptid, can it live there? Can it be there? And then the other player, if uh, it's a no, the answer is no, they put a cube on it. And if the answer is yes, they put one of these circles on it. And you're trying to learn more and more about the other player's clues by asking them questions, trying to look at the, the answers they're giving, and then uh, trying to work out exactly where the cryptid is. And then, of course, you make a guess. And if everyone says yes to your thing, then you're right. Um, it's a really streamlined, clever deduction game that just works. Um, it's very quick. I would say, like, I've had games that last only maybe 20 minutes. It's got a really nice look to it. I have found it to be a little bit too streamlined, if that makes any sense. Like, I, I just find it to be not that exciting or fun. There's definitely uh, real deduction to be done. Um, and I certainly have found it a lot easier if I make notes. And I did play one game where nobody else was taking notes except me and I just won way before anyone else was because the information is, is always there, but you've kind of got to really sort of sit there and think about it, think about what you've learned and sort of jot it down because there's just a bit too much to kind of constantly keep in your head at the same time. Um, so the clues will be things like um, within two spaces of a forest or there's certain habitats of bears and cougars and and then you can play an advanced version where the, the clues could be the not version of something, so the negative version of something. Definitely challenging. If you like deduction games, I think you should try this one. I'm sort of, I can be on the fence about deduction games. There are some that I love, some that I just don't really care about. So um, I would not take my reaction to this game as uh, necessarily an example of it being a bad game. I don't think it is a bad game, it's just, wasn't quite for me. I just didn't find the enjoyment in it that I was hoping to. Um, but definitely like a really clever deduction game with some nice artwork. So that's Cryptid. When in Rome, this is from the company that made Beasts of Balance, which is a dexterity game that I love that I talk about in my top 10 Christmas gifts video. Um, and this is another kind of cross between technology and board games. This one uses Amazon's Alexa. So it's a trivia game where you have a map of the world and you are answering, answering questions based on what city you're in. So you might be in London, you ask, question, ask a question about, answer a question about London. You might be in Moscow, uh, you answer a question about them. And um, as a game design, I think, it, um, I think it's really nice and simple. Uh, it's got these nice little pieces. You're flying around in these little plastic um, uh, planes that look like sort of quadropolis pieces. And then you're making friends in the countries where you've answered questions correctly, which allow, then allows you to travel back through these cities quickly if you need to. Um, and you can also pick up these items along the way. So in the game, there are, there's this thimble and this little metal key and a guitar plectrum. As a basic trivia game, I think the idea of it works great. But the thing that lets it down for me, in my experience, is just having to deal with Amazon Alexa whilst you're playing it. So you have to wait for Amazon to kind of talk through and they have recordings of all the questions with different people and you have to uh, listen to somebody from Russia ask you a question and then you have to say, Alexa, A, for example. And it's just the, the way it slows it down. That was her chiming in there. So thanks for that. Um, so <laughs> so it, it, it slows down the game that you're trying to play. And also for what is effectively a party game, you're having to listen a lot to the device talk to you. And it means you just can't really sort of have your own conversation because you're, you're on this kind of TV show where you have to really concentrate and, and listen to what the presenter's saying to you and you can't really banter and stuff. 
Um, so I think the design of the game is is good. And if you like trivia games, maybe if you kind of, uh, I think it would be really good for families and definitely good for non-gamers because it's got a real hook to it. You could imagine buying it for someone who loves Alexa and you could get it for them for a Christmas present. But just as an experience, um, it was just a bit frustrating and I just wanted to have more of the fun and less of the kind of admin. So that's when in Rome. Happy Little Accidents is a drawing game uh, which has Bob Ross on the front. If you don't know who that is, he was an American or maybe Canadian artist uh, who would do a TV show where he would just paint things. And uh, he's very, very popular and become like a meme. And uh, this box actually has like a furry cover to represent his beard and hair. Um, and Happy Little Accident, Accidents, I believe, is like a phrase of his. Um, and it kind of fits for this game, which is a party game with drawing in, as you might imagine. Um, and what happens is, at the start of the game, you will draw on little bits of paper, squiggles, just random lines, um, and then shuffle them up. And then you'll be assigned one, and then a card will tell you what you need to draw. So you might have to draw potato chips or bobsled. And then you take your colored pen, and you have to adapt that line or squiggle or whatever to make it look like a, bob, a bobsled or depict it in the, the way that you want. And then the fun bit about the game is that you then show each other your drawing and you have to kind of explain why it makes sense, how what you've done, your interpretation. I, I think that's really nice. It kind of fits um, artistic impressions and um, it's, it's definitely like a fun little creative exercise. And then at the end, you play three rounds, you have your favorite, and then you will kind of vote on which was your favorite overall, and you kind of put forward one of your drawings. And so I've had fun with this. I think it's a nice little drawing party game. Um, this one I am proud of was like a squiggle that I turned into like an ergonomic chair. Um, this one is kind of a triangle that somebody's turned into the dress or skirt of a dancer. Um, this one looks like a sort of snail, but then I turned it into like um, it, a guy with like a muscle, uh, like doing like a, he was like showing off his muscles. Um, so, and then, of course, yeah, you're explaining it to each other and just having some fun with it. Uh, the only downside to it, really, is that it's a pretty massive box for what is really just a few colored pens, a bit of paper, and some cards. Uh, and you could kind of imagine it coming in a box the size of Fake Artist Goes to New York, which is literally this size. Um, so that's, that's probably the reason that I won't be keeping it around. On top of that, I just have a lot of drawing games that I really love. And... I'm just not sure that I would turn to this one. But I think it's got some fun creativity. And yeah, I've had some fun with it. I, I can kind of imagine almost maybe taking the components out of it and maybe keeping them and playing them, just you know, keeping them in a much smaller container. So I might actually do that. So that's Happy Little Accidents. Right, um, well, not to talk about two drawing games at once. Um, this is Princess Ying. This is a really interesting game from Matago, designed by Roberto Fraga, who's done many games, but one of them is Captain Sonar. And it has, it's a really beautiful game. It has a board, it's a two-player game, and you have these really pretty um, cardboard stands that you're hiding behind. Because the idea is that I, uh, there's 25 of these in the center, and they're all kind of laid out, and you are hiding on, on yours in your back line. You're hiding the princess who is trying to get to the other side to kind of meet their lover. But you've also got these amazing bits with mirrors on. So as you move pieces, because basically a turn is just to kind of exchange two pieces anywhere on the board. You don't own the pieces anymore, so you're exchanging them. You could be moving your opponent's pieces. They could be moving yours. You're obviously trying to not give that away. But you will um, place a mirror. Uh, you'll be using your mirror and then having to secretly look in the mirror because you don't want to give away where the mirror is, whether you can see the princess or another character on the other side, the side that you can't see. And I, that's just such a cool idea. Um, and it, it, it just kind of brings the theme alive of trying to hide through these places and get to the end. So it's a very simple game where you're just trying to get the princess to the end. Um, and then there's a slightly more advanced one where there's a bit of deduction to it because... Um, you are assigned a couple of animals that the princess is in communication with, and you have to find out which two animals uh, the other player has by using your mirror, and then that tells you which suitor you're trying to fall in love with. So there's three different guards that you're trying to then meet with. 
uh, and you have to know the right one, which is assigned by a card at the start of the game. So that one's uh, a bit more advanced. I think that uh, this game is, is such a beautiful idea, but in playing it, I found it has a very big memory element, um, which is just very hard to keep track of. You can just kind of lose concentration. You're watching pieces move around, but then they all look the same. And then which was the one you, you just maybe look at your phone or have a conversation and then you've forgotten. And I think that's a bit of a shame. Uh, and then there's a, a little bit of bluffing to it. We actually try to kind of solve the memory problem with it and track pieces. And we did this with a whiteboard. And then what we found was that there just wasn't really a whole lot left. So it really is a kind of combination of memory and a little bit of bluffing. It didn't have the lasting gameplay that I was hoping for, that the, the idea and the setup kind of was promising. And for such a big box, I really have to love a two-player game like this. Um, so yeah, this one was a little bit of a miss for me. That's Prince Oshin. So then, this is Pictomania. This is the second edition of a game that was out many years ago. This is designed by Vladis Vartil from Czech Games Edition, and it's a drawing game. He also designed Codenames, of course, and you'll see that it's in the same box as Codenames. And that is really important because the original Pictomania was in a big box, size of Ticket to Ride, and this one is, what, half the size or less, and I, I love party games coming in this size. So uh, in this game, you're trying to draw things, you're all drawing at the same time, and you've been assigned a word from three cards. So nobody knows which word you have, so there's a potential of, what, 7, 14, 21 words that it could be. Um, and so you might be drawing something off a list which says dolphin, shark, whale, snail, snake, frog, lizard. So there are similarities between the things that maybe you're drawing and someone else's drawing. Because in a six-player game, you're going to have two words off of this list, two words off another, and two words off another. And so there will be some similarities. So what you're doing is trying to draw yours as quickly as possible because then there's a race to guessing. You've got a hand of cards and you're picking a number and then assigning it to a drawing. You can't then take it back. So you're, you're rushing. If you make a mistake, you're, you're screwed. It's, it's a hilarious game that I've actually already reviewed in my Alternatives to Pictionary video. So if you want to learn more about it, please go and see that video. Um, but what I love about it is that they've simplified it a little bit, um, but really they've made it a smaller package. Uh, there was more cards in the other one in terms of there was more cards to look at, so they've made you, they've given you less reading, which is I think a good idea. They've also really thought about putting things together that are similar in terms of drawing. Um, um, they've definitely just refined it. Uh, it also now uses paper and pencil instead of whiteboards, which makes it, I guess, cheaper and a bit smaller. And I quite like that because it means if you've got really good drawings, you can then keep them and explain the game easily and just kind of keep little memories of the game. But I, don't, I didn't find that I really minded the pencil versus the whiteboard. So yeah, I would highly recommend this game. Um, this basically already has a seal of actual love from my previous video, and this version is even better. So um, yeah, definitely recommend Pictomania. And then finally, we've got this beast. This is SEAL Team Flix. This is a dexterity tactical game from WizKids. And the idea of this is that you are um, your Navy SEALs and you are like an anti-terrorist unit. There's a bunch of um, terrorists and they are, are, you are having to like take them out and complete certain missions. And what you have in this game is a number of these incredible boards which uh, uh, hopefully you can see they are obviously made of like punch board, but they have these walls in them. And so uh, on your turn, you will be flicking pieces to shoot at enemies. So you will have little standees that represent your characters and then different enemies that you have to try and kill. And the thing that appealed to me about this game is effectively a simple way of calling it is like a dungeon crawl with dexterity. You are going around these things, trying to kill enemies, trying to complete your mission. But instead of rolling dice to, to kill the enemies, you are flicking things. And I really love the idea of that because I love the idea of dungeon crawl games, but I've never really found one that I absolutely love because they can just take a long time and have a lot of rules. And I was really hoping that the flicking aspect of this would simplify the game and give me just a dungeon crawl that's simple and fast and easy. 
Uh, and unfortunately, uh, it's simply a case of this is not the type of game for me because the rule book on this is not simple. Um, there is a lot of admin at the end of every round to, to control the AI, to move the enemies, to work out positioning. There's all these line of sight rules. There's just a lot of rules. And actually, in terms of how much there is to learn, how much admin there is to do, I don't think it is any simpler than dungeon crawl games that I've played. So really, it's it's got all of those things, and, and maybe it just cannot be achieved. Maybe you can't have a workable dungeon crawl without all of that extra faff, but the fact is it has it, much like other ones that I've played, and that was just kind of where I lost my enthusiasm, because I found that you'd do a couple of flicks, you'd shoot your bullets maybe for that turn, and then you'd have to wait ages, not just for everyone else to take your turn, but to do all the admin. And then you come back, you do a couple of flicks, and then you wait ages again. And just the amount of time between that, it just wasn't worth it for me. Now, I can tell, and I've certainly looked at other reviews, that there is some real tactical depth to this. You can really um, decide positioning. And certainly, when I read the rules, there was really um, clever ideas for kind of shooting around corners and... Uh, I can imagine that if you wanted to really think it through, that you would really be rewarded for that. Um, uh, it was just the case that when we played it, we, we just weren't having we we weren't having fun. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, this is a disappointment for me, but it might not be for you. Of course, it's also a massive box, so you, it's certainly a big commitment, and you get a lot in there. This is really really heavy. So, um, really interesting idea, um, but just wasn't wasn't for me. That is SEAL Team Flicks. And those are the board games that I've been playing lately. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching.